This is Pat's Two Cents, reminding you that God's into love. Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We're Saturday's God's Church of Love. And we're going to deal with how much we need love, especially going through this season. I want everyone to turn with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I want you to see what love acts like and what it does not act like. So as we're going through this tough time, let me give my city a shout out. When I went to Winco, the lady who was working at, at crowd control told me the nice thing about working at that store was that all the customers, no matter how crowded, no matter how long the lines all the customers were so nice and polite. No fights, no arguments, no attitudes. Everybody was very sweet to one another. So I want to share this with you. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. What does that mean? That means Empty cans make a lot of noise. So some of y'all walking around talking about uh, God loves you and so do I and, 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 and kumbaya and we love each other and you're holding hands and huggy kissy at church and all that. But when you leave church, folks that are doing without, nobody's thinking about them. Nobody's checking up on the elderly, making sure that their needs are met. Mm-hmm. Then I have to ask you, where is the love, baby? Verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. Nothing but a bunch of noise. Mm -hmm. That's all you are. You're nothing but a bunch of gifts that build up your own ego. That's right. See, God's gifts and callings are without repentance. So just because you're gifted and just because you're operating in your gift does not mean you have God's favor. Because if you see your brother and sister and they have need and you shut up your bowels of compassion, that's word. How dwelleth the love of God in you? Mm -hmm. Verse three, and though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. See, there are many people out there that give, 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 give. Many people that feed, 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 clothe, clothe, clothe. They do all this good stuff. They give big bucks to charity. <laughs> They get on TV with these big giant checks and they shake hands and have their pictures taken on, plastered all over the news. Ain't no love in them. It's a tax write-off. God knows when what you do is based on love or ego. He knows. He knows when what you do is based on getting pats on the back and rubbing elbows with the uppity ups, getting favor galore with folks that God is not at all happy with, just so you can fatten your pockets that much more. God knows why you do what you do. It's not just the do, it's the why. And the why should always be based on love, true love, true compassion, true concern, True mercy. Number four, charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself. It's not puffed up. Hmm. Right. My way or the highway. That's vaunteth not itself. Yeah. In my way or the highway, you know, it's got to be done my way. See, if I'm going to be the head of this thing, you know, you got to do you, you know, you got to toe the line. I'm the one that calls the shots around here. I be's the boss up in here. Uh-huh. Right. So you better know 
who's in control up in here, baby cakes? Because I kick your behind to the curb. Right. So what does it say? Charity. Charity is another word for love. Vaunteth not itself. Is not puffed up. And let's go back a little further. Charity, charity envieth not. A lot of folks out there are just jealous. They have jealous attitudes. They're very competitive. Somebody does something well, they got to top them. They got to they gotta show them up. They got to do better than that. Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. Yeah, that's not love, baby cakes. Okay, number five. Doth not behave itself unseemly. See, this is what love does not do. Doth not behave itself unseemly. Seeketh not her own, like I said, my way or the highway. Is not easily provoked. Not easily provoked. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Bad, what you say to me? Say that to my face. Mm -hmm. Not easily provoked. Thinketh no evil. That means it's not suspicious. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A lot of folks out there are suspicious. They think everybody's up to something. That's where you got to check your spirit. That ain't love. Rejoices not in iniquity. Now, see, a lot of people, oh, girl, girl, you cussed him out? Ooh, hoo -hoo. Boy, I wish I could have been a fly on the windowsill. You cussed him out good, didn't you? What does it say? Rejoices not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Mm -hmm. Beareth all things, believeth all things. That See, people who love believe the best in people. They expect the best of people. They know that people will let them down. They know there are, are treacherous folks out there, but when they really connect with a person, they're, they, they're pulling for them. They're hoping for them they're 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 trusting in them they're they they just have good feelings toward them they're not looking at them at the corner of their eye waiting for the axe to fall mm -hmm. yeah you know you ain't about nothing all that yeah yeah you think you all that in a bag of chips you ain't about nothing look at him look at him no believeth all things hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Are you willing to endure when someone you love is falling short of the mark and you have to pay the piper because of it? Are you willing to endure and stick by their side closer than a brother? Or will you bail at the first sign of trouble? Hmm. Check your love thermometer. Number eight, charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part. Didn't know that, did you? But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. Mm -hmm. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know, even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, love, uh, charity, these three. But the greatest of these is love. So when you're in the grocery store, and somebody is standing there and they come up shortchanged and they got to stand there and undo some of the, the stuff, take it off the list because they don't have enough money and you got change in your pocket and you know it'll more than cover it. Does it occur to you to pay it for them? Yeah. You see a person having a hard time with their wagon, does it occur to you to help them push their wagon to the car, unload it? and help them and take the wagon back for them so they can just get in the car when you see a sick, weak, elderly person trying to handle all that. Somebody coming up in the line with five items and you got 105. 
Does it dawn on you to let the person with five items go ahead of you? You're driving down the street. Somebody's rushing. You know somehow they're in a hurry. You're not. Does it dawn on you to just let them go ahead? You're not losing out on the street. The street is there. It's enough street for everybody. Or do you have to hold on to your territorial attitude and not let them get ahead of you? What is your attitude in those situations? That's how you check your love. In these days, some of you have family members you know are low income. Does it ever dawn on you to just say, here, here's 500 bucks? Because 500 bucks to you is chump change. Does it dawn on you to say, here's 500 bucks, cash? I don't even want you having to go to the store, uh, to the bank. Here's 500 bucks, go get the stuff you need. They don't have the wherewithal to get it. You take them to the store and shop with them. How's that? Does it occur to you to do that? You see somebody going out in flimsy clothes in church and they're always shivering in the cold, but you know they're low income. Does it occur to you to take them to the store and buy them a sufficient coat? Maybe some extra blankets for their bed? Maybe an electric blanket to keep them warm? Does it occur to you? See. Love does things that people don't think to do. Love will take you beyond your range of thoughtfulness. Love will take you beyond your, your sphere of compassion. Love will make you do things that you ordinarily wouldn't even, it wouldn't even occur to you to do. Think about it. You say you love. That's like saying you got faith. What does the Bible say? Yeah, you want to show me your faith by telling me how much you believe. I'll show you my faith by what I do. Same way with love. Show your love by what you do. You have a neighbor down the street, you know their car is broke down, busted and disgusted, and so is their money. And you got, you got money, you could almost buy a car. But okay, their car needs fixing. Why don't you say, you know, take your car to the shop, I'll pay for it to get fixed. Why don't you get AAA to take it in for them? You got AAA, they don't. They can't afford it. Think about all the various ways. Some neighbor down the street, you know they're hard up. And you have people over for dinner. Why don't you call them up and say, hey, I'm going to come get you. I want you to come join us for dinner. And when dinner's over with, all the leftovers goes home with them. Ever occur to you to do that? Instead of you keeping all the leftovers? See, love does things. <laughs> You're trying to get somebody dressed. You got somewhere to go. You got a deadline. They get dressed and then they have an accident. Slows you up. You get angry with them. They can't help it. They didn't do it on purpose. Maybe they're weak. Maybe they're old. Maybe, maybe they're sickly or disabled. You get angry. You get aggravated. You get frustrated. Hmm? Where dwelleth the love? Where is the love? Hmm. See, <clears throat> we think we know what love is. We tell each other all the time, I love you, love you, love you, love you. Mm -hmm. Will you borrow money to go back east when somebody's in a crisis to be with them through it? You may not be able to do anything about the crisis, but you may be the only friend they have. How much would, how far will you go <laughs> to show someone your love and support? You may not be able to put money in their pocket,
but you can be there with them through the dark hour for a week or two. Lay your life aside for a week or two and just be there for them. Don't bombard them with your presence. Just be there for them. Hmm. Think about that. You know, I have a friend. Her name is Edie. When my husband passed away, she flew up here from Atlanta, Georgia to spend a month with me because she knew I had already told her my husband was passing away. I'm not crying about the death. I'm touched by the fact that she loved me enough to put her life on the side. And she came up here and stayed with me a couple of months to support me. Just be here for me <laughs> because she knew that my husband was dying. And after she was here 10 days, my husband passed away. Mm -hmm. And she was here for over another month. How many of you would do that for a friend of yours you haven't seen for over a decade? How many of you would do that? That's love. That's love. I have a friend named Pat. She lives in Palmdale. She went and bought herself a new car. They were only going to give her $500 as a trade-in. So she prayed about it. And she thought about me. She gave me. She didn't sell it. She gave me her car. Her old car. You know how many people would have just taken the trade-in? Well, that knocked off 500 now, she was low income. Trust me, she was lower income than I am. I'm at 915 a month. She sat there and she's a couple of hundred less than I am a month. She lives with her family, thank God. But she could have benefited from that 500 bucks, y'all. But she chose to give me the car. That's love. My husband and I, his son was in a crisis. His wife and he were about to be put out on the street for selling the property out from under them. And they had no, no warning, you know, just within the limits, but not enough money to do anything with the warning because they didn't have enough time to prepare, save up, or do anything. And now they have no way to go and they got to be out in two weeks. What are they going to do? Right? He's in tears. Crying to his father for prayer. Because they don't know what they're going to do. They're at their wit's end. And what do we do? The Lord blesses my husband and me to give them $10,000. Not lend. They would never have been able to pay it back. That's another monkey on their back. We had loan money. We gave them $10,000. And it solved everything. The Lord told me 10000 And when he said that's what he would need, that was the confirmation we needed to know that it was God telling us to give it to them. And we gave it to him. And we never looked back. And the hot tub my husband didn't get because of it. The swimming pool I didn't get because of it was waiting right here in this house that God had waiting for us. So we did not miss out because we sacrificed something that we had been longing for for years. And it was finally within reach. See, when you sacrifice something that's mean, that means a lot to you, I'm not talking about sacrificing a basic need. I'm talking about a luxury that you had just been longing for. When you sacrifice your desires and your wishes, your goals, your dreams for someone else, God does not let that go wasted. He does not let that go unnoticed. That's an act of love. 
not obligation. We did not feel obligated at all. We wanted to help them. See, when people want to help people, God kicks it into another gear and it doesn't just stop there. God starts planning other things for you as a result because your labor of love is never in vain with God. He will never forget your labor of love, baby. Whatever you do, make sure it's based on love. Make sure it's founded on love. What comes with love? Compassion. What comes with love? Mercy. What comes with love? Concern. Kindness. Patience. Understanding. Ask God to fill your tank with love. The agape love, not eros love or phileo love. No, 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 no. You don't want the human limited love. You want God's love, agape. What does that mean? Unconditional love. That's the highest level of love you can offer. God bless you as you see God to show you what true love acts like, what true love talks like and what true love looks like.